Welcome back to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in the digital infrastructure industry. I'm Buffy Harakitis of JSA, and this is our final interview. We're saying we're saving one of the best for last uh, here in Las Vegas, live from Yoda 2024. And joining me today is Sarah Peterson. She is the managing director of Clear Sustainability and also a prominent attorney here in the United States and also in the UK. Sarah, welcome. Thank you. I'm a longtime watcher, first time interviewee, so I'm excited to be here with you guys. And we are honored to have you here today Thank to you. talk about such a critically important topic, sustainability. Yes. Um, all we've been hearing about across the panels, you were one of the speakers as yes, well, Yesterday uh, is such this critical topic of sustainability and the regulations that are going to immediately impact data centers. Why don't we just dive right in and talk about that? Great. So there is. There's a lot of regulations that are coming down for data centers in companies in general. We could take, as I said on the panel yesterday, we could have taken the full 40 minutes just to talk about regulations, but it wouldn't even have covered, scratch the surface. It would have covered a very scant amount. But there are some key pieces that are going to start affecting data centers here in the very near future. Um, and I'll kind of address a few of those and then yeah. we can kind of go from there. Um, last month in California, the, attorney, the governor, Newsom, signed Senate Bill 219, which now is going to require companies that do a billion dollars in revenue and do business in California to have to report on their GH, GHG admissions. And then if you are a company that makes $500 million in revenue and you do business in California, you will have to file biennially a climate report, which, will, which is requiring you to tell, to share your climate-related financial risk and how you are mitigating and adapting to those risks. Um, New York has similar regulations to California. And then everybody kind of knows about the SEC uh, climate disclosure rule that came out in March that mm -hmm. had a lot of controversy and is now um, has been stayed pending some resolution to the legal challenges. But um, the SEC will require large accelerated filers and accelerated filers to file um, their scope one and two admissions. We'll see what happens with that one. It's got a lot of controversy to it. Yeah, definitely. Um, but the biggest two pieces of regulation I think that are going to impact data centers in the EU as well as here in the US is the CSDD and the CSRD. The CSRD is going to start requiring companies to provide a double materiality impact assessment which a company will have to explain and show how their actions are impacting the environment and human rights. And then as well, they're going to have to show how sustainability matters are impacting their company. The one regulation that has the most heartburn for me, because it really changes the dynamic for companies, is the CSDD, which is the Corporate Sustainability Due Diligence Directive. This is the first regulation that now has companies being held liable for their upstream and downstream activities. And companies will have to identify, prevent, and mitigate any environmental impacts and any human rights impacts that they see. And if they have anyone in their supply chain that um, is having an environmental impact or is causing a human rights issue, that company, if it's a bigger company and their supplier is an SME, they will have a responsibility to provide either financial support or training to that company to help mitigate the impacts that they're having. So obviously that was a lot. So, <laughs> so many um, stringent requirements for data centers and companies yes. globally, as you mentioned, and you ran down that list for us. Thank you so much. So how can data centers and companies comply with all of these regulations. What are some of your recommendations there? So one of the key things that I think companies need to be doing now is, and listen, these regulations, they've been given, companies have been given criteria, but not a lot of really good guidance as to how to start implementing these regulations. Um, but companies need to really start developing a very strong due diligence program. Um, they need to start examining their relationships with their suppliers. 
the big thing, obviously, as an attorney for me, is starting to look at their contra contracts and their contractual obligations and ensuring that your contracts contain the language that holds everyone accountable right. for complying with the regulations, not just the company itself, but that you have the ability to have your suppliers also comply with. Accountability. Accountability, then. yeah. Definitely. And ensuring that the information that you're getting from your suppliers and that you are providing is transparent and truthful and that you have the ability to um, quantify the information that you're giving, that you can back up why you are making the statements that you're making. That's great advice there. And then how about when it comes to operating across borders? Because there's so many data centers and obviously companies that are operating across borders and different regulations from country, continent to country. Yeah. Uh, so give us some information there. So I get this question a lot about, yes, exactly. Where, how do I start? Where do I even start? Which regulation do I comply with? I get the question a lot about what's going to happen in the U.S. And my answer to that one is, let's see what happens on November 6th. Because a lot of what's going to, you know, with the political landscape here will dictate what rules and regulations will come into play. My, if I had my crystal ball, in my advice to companies is, start looking at com in complying with the EU regulations. The EU, since 2019, has been a leader in developing sustainability regulations. They were the, kind of the first one to come out of the gate. They have some of the strongest regulations. So I would start looking to develop and build your due diligence and sustainability programs around the CSRD, the Corporate Sustainability Responsible, uh, Reporting Directive, the CSRD, the EED, the Energy Efficiency Directive, I would start looking and developing in accordance with those. And then obviously, as the United States starts um, incorporating regulations in that, modify it if need be. But I really think the U.S. is going to follow the same route as the EU. I mean, we almost have to. At this point, because, right. yeah, they, the EU has come out and, like I said, they have taken such a strong, proactive stance. Yes, it's almost at this point companies are already complying with that. And I think that's what they're going to have the expectation for. And you mentioned your crystal ball. My crystal ball. So I'm going to ask you to bring that crystal ball back for us one more time. Okay. And tell us what prediction, if you had to make a prediction, mm -hmm. what one sustainability initiative or technology do you think will help solve future climate change and sustainability challenges? Wow. So... In the digital infrastructure. In the digital infrastructure. So the EU recently passed the Eco, Eco Design Sustainability Product uh, Regulation. And inside of that regulation, they um, have a clause about a digital product passport. And my crystal ball is, I think the digital product passport is going to become so key in the data center industry and actually in the corporate world as a whole because what it is going to start requiring is every product that goes into the EU is going to basically an EPD. The information that's on an EPD is going to have to be put on a digital product passport. So people are going to be able to know uh, the critical raw materials, any of the GHG issues, any environmental impact issues. It's providing all the information about a product so we can better use that product. It's great that we're collecting all this information. It's great that we're reporting on GHG. But if we're not using it to do more than just become efficient, if we're not using it to develop products that are recyclable, refurbishable, reusable, making sure that we have a true circular economy and that we're taking and developing things not from a cradle to cradle or cradle to grave, but a cradle to cradle perspective, then what's the point of all the regulations? What's the point of all the reporting if we're not really doing a full life cycle of everything? Well, thank you so much for that prediction. I do agree with you that cradle to cradle uh, approach is going to definitely help this industry. And like you said, you know, all oh, the companies yeah. globally across the world. Is there anything else you'd like to add today, Sarah? You know, what I will say is the one thing I think everybody needs to keep in mind, the goal of these regulations is to start holding companies and putting pressure on companies to make sure their actions line up with the statements that they're making. So if you're making sustainability statements and goals, make sure your actions are lining up with that. Because if not, the consequences are very high. 
And it, the most important thing, it's, it could potentially damage your reputation. There's a lot of legal liability. You can find me. I can talk to you about that. But you, you need to be, you're wanting to build a reputation. You're wanting to build a business. So make sure that your, your statements and your actions line up. You got to back up what you say. Got to back up what you and say. And talk is cheap, right? That's right. That's right. So Sarah, thanks so much again uh, for you. joining us today here on another episode of JSA TV. If viewers want to go and learn more about clear sustainability for your practice as a prominent attorney here in the U.S. and the U.K., tell viewers where they can go. ClearSustainability.com is where it has all the information, so they can find me there. Well, you can find lovely Sarah there, ClearSustainability.com. And again, thanks, viewers, for tuning in to another episode of JSA TV live from Yoda 2024 in fabulous Las Vegas. Stay curious, stay connected, and happy networking.